Before we jump into the next section, I want to do a little warm up, find the mean, median, mode, and range of this given data. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So for review, mean, you add up all your numbers and divide how many total data points there are. Median, when you write them in order from smallest to biggest, it's your middle number. If there's an even number, then you take the average of the two middle numbers. Um, mode is the one that shows up the most. This is the only one there can be more than one of. And then range is your biggest number minus your smallest number. Um, so for a mean, I added all these up and I got 70. There are 10 data points, so 70 divided by 10 is 7. Median, they're already in order from smallest to biggest. Since there's 10 data points, I counted our median would be between 5 and 6. Um, so it's the average between these two. 8 plus 8 divided by 2 is 8, so our median is 8. Our mode is the one that shows up the most. 9 shows up the most, so 9 is our mode. And range is our biggest number, which is 9, minus our smallest number, which is 3, so 6. So just a little bit of review before we start our stats. We are going to start Chapter 3, which is Descriptive Statistics. Um, so Lesson 3.1 is Collecting and Organizing Univariate Data. Um, so I would pause the video and write down these vocab words. Univariate data is one variable data. Uni means one, so we're looking at everything that just has one vi uh, variable. There's two main types. There's qualitative data, um, which is data that's not given numerically. It's descriptive. So like your favorite ice cream flavor or your political affiliation or your religion, those are descriptive. They're qualities, so that's qualitative data. What we're going to be looking at is quantitative data. Quantity is numbers, so these are numerical. Um, quantitative data can be classified in two ways, either discrete or continuous. Discrete data is stuff that can be counted. It can only take specific values. So, for example, um, the number of cars in a parking lot. There can't be half a car. Uh, shoe size. There's only specific shoe sizes that we use. People, animals. Um, those are discrete data. Continuous is something that can be measured. Um, so, height, weight, time. Um, anything where you can kind of have like a fractional, I can take a range of numbers, that's continuous data. So this is what we're going to be looking at, these two different types of quantitative data. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is how to organize data. Um, so these are frequency charts. So we have two groups of data here. This first one here is discrete data. It can only be certain values. It's counted, 24, the number of cherries. Um, so those are total number of cherries. Down here we have length of minutes of phone calls, so this is continuous data. So these are two different types of frequency tables. This first one is for discrete, so you take each of the different values that it can be and it each gets its own row. Um, continuous data we represent as an interval that you can make the different intervals, so we're looking at anything between 0 to 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, so on and so forth. Um, so then all you do is you just go over and look at your data and you count up how many of each. So frequency is just how many. So for example, um, for the number of cherries in the box, 40 shows up twice. So there are two boxes that have 40 cherries. There are four boxes that have 41 cherries. So go ahead and pause the video and finish this first frequency table. So if we finish counting up, we find that there are six boxes that had 42 cherries, seven boxes that had 43 cherries, two boxes that had 44 cherries, and three boxes that had 45 cherries. One way to check your work is when you do a frequency table, the frequency should add up to the total number of data points. So if I add up all of these frequencies, it should add up to 24 boxes, which it does. So the same idea applies for a continuous frequency table. You're just looking for the ones in the range that they give you. So go ahead and pause the video and fill out this continuous frequency table. So on this one, again, you're looking for the range. So how many are between 0 included and 5 not included? That's an important thing to look at is which one it has the or equal to here. Um, so 6 are between 0 and 5. 6 are between 5 and 10. 6 are between 10 and 15 none between 15 and 20, and two between 20 and 25. And then again, if I add all these up, it should equal 20 telephone calls, which it does. So again, these are frequency tables. They're ways to represent data in a more organized way. So first thing we're going to look at is measures of central tendency. I would pause the video and write down these notes. 
Some of it you may not need to write down because you already know, but go ahead and look over all this. So the most common measurements of central tendency are our mean, median, and mode. Our mode, just like in the warm-up, is the one that occurs most frequently. Um, there could be none, for example, if every data value only shows up once, or there could be more than one. It's the only one that you could have more than one. If you have group data, so like that continuous frequency table on the previous slide, um, you might be only able to find a modal class, the group that has the most data. For median, um, again, that's the, if you arrange your data in smallest to biggest, it's the middle number. If you have an even number of data values, then it's the mean or the midpoint of the two middle values. Um, and again, if you have group data, so like that continuous frequency table, um, we will only be able to estimate the mean, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the last one, mean, um, we represent this with an x with a bar over it, or whatever your variable is with a bar over it, so x bar. Um, the sum of all the data points divided by the number of values. If you um, add or subtract some constant k from every single value, then the mean also gets added or subtracted by some constant k. If you multiply each data value by a constant k, then the mean also gets multiplied by this constant k. That's, there's this constant um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Um, again, this star means it's on your formula booklet. So for discrete values of n, so we're talking about discrete values, uh, this is your formal math definition of the mean. This says sum all your data values from 1 to n, sum them all up, add them all up, and then divide by n. So add all your numbers up, divide by n. If you have frequency data, um, you can do this by doing kind of a shortcut and multiplying each data value by how many times it shows up, adding all that up, and then dividing by your total frequency. Um, and then group data, again, we'll only be able to estimate, which we'll talk about in a minute. So here's an example. Um, we have grades on a history test for 14 students. First thing we want to do is find the mean, median, and mode. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and do that. So I did the mean first. I added all of these numbers up and I ended up with 924 divided by the 14 data points. So our mean is 66. Median, I wrote the numbers in chronicle or order smallest to biggest and found that the median is going to be between 66 and 67, so 66.5. And then mode, the one that shows up the most, is 58. So a 15th student took the test, and the mean now became 66.2. And we want to calculate the grade of the 15th student. So go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So the way that I set it up is that if the mean is 66.2, that's going to be the sum of all of our data points divided by the total number of students. So I let x be this 15th student's grade, and I know the sum of all the ones that we have is 924, and I'm going to add x to that and divide by now there's 15 students. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and calculate what the student's grade would be. So I multiplied both sides by 15 and got 993 equals 924 plus x, subtract by 924, and we end up with x to be 69. So the 15th student's grade is 69. So you can use um, how you calculate a mean or even a median or a mode to help you find missing data points. So this next example, Mindy opens some bags of candy and counts how many pieces are in each bag, and she represented her data that she calculated in a frequency table. Um, so using this frequency table, I want you to find the mean, median, and mode number of candies in a bag. So this is frequency, so there are 23 pieces of candy that show up twice. 24 shows up three times. Um, so use that to help you calculate the mean, median, and mode. So for the mean, you're going to add up all the data points and divide by how many total data points there were. So first, um, I figured out that there was 20 bags of candy that she opened. I added up all these frequencies to find that this was 20. And then when I calculated this, I said there was 2 times 23 pieces, 3 times 24, 9 times 25, 5 times 26, 1 times 27. So that was 500 total pieces of candy divided by 20 bags. So that was a mean of 25 candies. For the median, when you're listing in a frequency table like this, if there's 20 data points, the median is going to happen on the 10 and a half data point. Um, so when I'm looking at the frequency, I'm trying to find where data point 10 and a half would be. So 2, not yet, 
after another three, now I'm only at five data points, and then nine, I've done 14 data points. So that means the 10 and a half data point has to happen somewhere in here within these nine data points. So that means your median is gonna be 25. And then the mode is gonna be the highest frequency. On a frequency table, that's the easiest. Uh, what's the highest value? This nine is the highest value, so your mode is 25. So in this case, the mean, median, mode were all 25. So for this next example, we have the weights, which is a continuous uh, quantitative data of 50 cats recorded in this frequency table. And we want to approximate the median, the mean, and find the modal class. So because this is grouped data, um, we aren't going to be able to find the exact values. We aren't given the exact data points. We're only given the groups of them between 2 and 3 kilograms, between 3 and 4. So we use what's called the mid-interval value to help us estimate the mean and the median. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the mid-interval of each of these categories, which is the midpoint of the class. So for example, the mid-interval value of the class 2 to 3 would be 2.5. 3 to 4 would be 3.5, so on and so forth. Um, in this case, they're all evenly spaced intervals, so it's just 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5. .5. So what we're going to do is we are going to assume that every data point between 2 and 3 is actually 2.5. Every data point between 3 and 4 is 3.5. So we're estimating the data points based on this mid-interval value. So that's why it's only an approximation of the median and the mean, and we can't find the actual value of it. Um, so now what you're going to do for the mean and the median is you're going to do it the same way that you did, we did the previous one, but instead of using the exact value, you're going to use this mid-interval. So go ahead and pause the video and um, answer questions A and B. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing that we did on the previous slide with the discrete data, but again, now we're just estimating each class with its mid-interval value. Um, so I did the same thing I did on the, on the uh, frequency table before. So 5 times 2.5, 19 times 3.5, so on and so forth, divided by that there was 50 cats. Um, so if you add all of this up, you end up with 210 divided by 50. So the mean weight is 4.2 kilograms, or our approximation for the mean weight. Median, it's going to happen, there's 50 cats, so that means it's going to happen on the 25.5 25 data point. Um, so if I'm looking at the frequency, I, the first one I've only counted 5 cats so far, and then the next one I've added 19 to that, so I'm at 24 cats. And then the next group I've counted 41 cats. So the 25.5 data point would occur somewhere in this group of 17 right here. So our estimation or our approximation for the median would be this group here, the 4.5 kilograms. And then our modal class is the group that has the most, mode, um, and that would be the 19, so that's 3 to 4 kilograms. We can't say it's the mode because maybe all 17 of these data points are the same thing, but the group that's the biggest is the 3 to 4. Time. So this is how you estimate or approximate the median, the mean, and find the modal class for grouped data. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and answer the last question, why are these values only approximations? So as we talked about before, the reason these are approximations is because we did not, um, we don't know the actual data. We weren't given every single weight of all 50 of these cats. We estimated it using the mid-interval value. So these are just approximations for the mean and the median. Um, they're not the exact values. So this last example, we have um, the ages of some students taking a chemistry course at university. Um, so first, find the mean, median, and mode of these ages, and then try and decide if there's any data entries that don't fit with the rest of this data. So for the mean, um, I added all these up and I ended up with 429 and there was 18 total data points. So divided by 18, the mean age was 23.8. Um, and then the median, I put them in order and I found the 9th and 10th data points, took the average of them and got 19.5. And then mode 19 shows up the most. So the mean was 23.8, the median was 19.5, and the mode was 19. So we can see that the mean is 
quite a bit higher than both the median and the mode. Um, so looking at this data, are there any data points that don't seem to fit with the rest? Well, if I look at this here, I see that I have a 55-year-old and a 63-year-old taking these university courses, and nobody else is older than 22. Um, so I would say that the, that 55-year-old and that 63-year-old um, skew our data. Okay, they don't fit with the rest of our data. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take those two values out and we're going to recalculate the mean, median, and mode. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. So if we take out the data points of 55 and 63, now our total is 311 and there's only 16 data points. So finding the mean, we find it to be 19.4 years old. And then our median is now going to be between, between the 8th and 9th data point, so 19. Um, and then the mode is still 19 because that's still the one that shows up the most. So if we notice, the mean changed quite a bit by taking out these two, the 55 and the 63. The median just changed slightly and the mode didn't change at all. Um, so when you have data points that are extreme or way outside the rest of your data, we call those outliers. Um, they generally don't affect the median or the mode or not a, a lot. Like you see the median only changed by a half. Um, but they can distort the mean. So we drop the mean by actually, um, you know, four and a half years here by cutting out the 55 and the 63. Um, so those are outliers. They're something that's way outside the rest of your data. The last thing that we're going to talk about is dispersion. Um, so dispersion, measures of dispersion, is how far spread out your data is. Um, so one type of dispersion we calculated in the warm-up, which is your range, the largest value minus your smallest value. Um, that just tells you how spread, you know, to all your data is. Um, the next one, which is one we're going to use the most, is what's called standard deviation. So we represent this with a lowercase sigma here, sigma sub whatever your variable is. So sigma sub, sub x. Um, and that shows us how spread out the data is compared to the mean. So this is the mathematical calculation. You take each data point, you subtract it from the mean, um, you square it, you add all those up, you divide by how many total data points you have, and then you take the square root of that. In this class, you'll only be using your calculator to calculate standard deviation. Um, some things to know about standard deviation, similar to the mean, if you add or subtract um, a constant k from each data value, it's not going to change the standard deviation. Um, if you multiply each data value by a constant k, then the standard deviation will be also multiplied by um, that constant k, but absolute value. It doesn't take into account negative values because you square it here. Um, the variance is your standard deviation squared, so just without the square root here. Um, the next one is the interquartile range. So the interquartile range looks at how spread the middle 50% of your data is. And in order to find that, we have to find the Q3 and the Q1. So the IQR, the interquartile range, this is in red, this is on your formula booklet, is your Q3, which is your upper quartile or the 75th percentile, the median of the upper half of your data, minus the Q1, which is your lower quartile, um, or the 25th percentile, so the median of the lower half of your data. So this has been 3.1, which is measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion.